What's up guys, super awesome to have you guys back on the channel. It's great to be with you guys again for another week of preparation. We are here doing our weekly analysis and for today's weekly analysis guys, we're going to get into five different pairs, the DXY, Aussie CAD, Aussie JPY, NZD CAD and NZD JPY. And the main reason I've chosen these pairs guys is because today I want to show you guys how we are going to be able to kind of look at correlated pairs which would be Aussie CAD and NZD CAD and trade any potential CAD weakness still keeping our risk in check and then I'm also going to show you how we're going to hedge JPY strength or JPY weakness by trading what we see on AUD JPY and on NZD JPY still being able to capitalize on any JPY strength or JPY weakness on NZD CAD and on AUD CAD, we're looking for that CAD weakness. And so we're going to still be able to kind of use these two correlated pairs to find entries, but still allow ourselves to time our entries. Now let's get started with the DXY guys. So on the DXY, we're looking at the DXY from a daily perspective. And from a daily perspective, like we discussed last week, the DXY is at this support structure over here. And at that support structure, we know that this is a previous area where we saw loads of buyers jumping into the market and the market has currently been decelerating towards this area. So we are looking for potential bullish strength. But if we just look at the most recent price action on the daily, what we will see, especially Friday's price action, what we will see is that the dollar index has had a bearish rejection from a previous resistance area. Now, looking at things, obviously, we drop down onto a smaller time frame so that we can get just a little bit more detail. And obviously, we sacrifice our relevance of structure for the detail. Though, if we're looking at a, at a H4, guys, what we can see is that things are still trending bearish. H4 is still in a bearish trend. What we have is lows, we have lower highs, we have lower lows, we have lower highs, I guess equal lows, lower highs, lower lows, and then I guess equal highs here because price has not been able to close above these previous resistance areas. So we're assuming we're going into next week, assuming that the dollar index is in a range and could potentially stay in between this important support structure here, higher time frame support, and this H4 resistance up here. We'll only be able to get a definitive direction once the dollar index has broken out of this ranging period. Now, because we are in a range, we're going to approach this with the probabilities of a range bound market, and we're going to be looking to buy down low, and we're going to be looking to sell up high. Because we've violated this descending trend line, we're assuming that structure could potentially function or could potentially deliver bullish order flow. So because of that, guys, we're going to be looking at the low of this range for those potential buying opportunities. If price decelerates towards the support, then that will open us to be looking for risk entries at that support structure. But if price is impulse to our level where we are looking to trade any dollar strength, then we will basically wait for that reversal structure and that reduced risk entry that will allow us to enter with the appropriate probabilities that we're looking for and in the direction that supports our higher time frame bias being at support we want to be looking for those bullish reactions so that's it for the dxy guys let's go on to aussie cad on aussie cad guys we'll start off with aussie cad on the daily time frame and on the daily what we've discussed is that Aussie CAD is at or approaching this support structure over here where we saw a previous rally that managed to break and violate previous swing highs. So buyers coming in from these structural areas able to violate structural highs. So we know that a lot of buyers jumped in from these areas here. Price has now approached this exact same area where previously buyers showed interest. If you look at the nature of price, we do see that we have a descending structure or a descending channel. If you look at where we are within this descending channel, we have our support resist uh, our support trend line over here and we also have our first touch 
our second touch and we are approaching or nearing the third touch or the completion of this structure from a daily perspective so we have support horizontal support we also have our support trend line that is giving us confluence within this area to be looking for potential bullish reactions from Aussie CAD. So guys, from Aussie CAD, what we're going to be looking for, let's drop down onto a smaller time frame, refine what we are looking at, and then discuss the structure and what would give us a potential trading opportunity. So guys, on the Aussie CAD, what we can see is that structure is trending to the downside. What we need to be able to ex exit or to enter or to execute our position based off the bias that we've established from those higher time frames, taking into account maybe a potential reversal from these structural areas, we need to wait for prices to start trending bullish. So what we need to see here on the H4 or even on those smaller time frames, if you're going to be looking for those quick scalping positions, obviously because markets are still trending down. So you need to be in and out quickly if you're going to be looking for some bullish price action in a downtrending market. What we're going to be waiting for, hopefully on our higher time frames, is for us to start to see prices trending bullish. Once we see those highs being created, higher lows forming, and higher structures being violated to the upside, we will then assume that this market is now in an uptrend or is in a potential uptrend. And we will then be looking to get in on any higher lows that might form in this market for some potential upside. We'll be paying attention to two important things. First of all, how prices have got to this area. We can already see that deceleration from price. Now we need to pay attention to what prices do in this area. Do prices give us that inverted head and shoulder structure, something that we can be able to trade that will give us that probability. That's what our eyes should be focused on. Now that we've established our bias of that higher time frame, we need to look for structure to confirm that bullish bias and give us reasons to execute our entry in the direction that we've observed from higher time frame structure. Now that is our bias for Aussie CAD. We're looking for those buying opportunities. Let's go on to Aussie JPY. Now on Aussie Yen guys, we'll start on the daily. What we can see from a daily perspective is that price is within some sort of an ascending structure. How do we know that? We see prices creating highs coming down to create extreme lows. Where are the next highs that violated these previous highs is these highs over here. So if we look at the major swings on Aussie JPY, we have highs, we have lows, we then have higher highs, and then we obviously have higher lows, giving us a potential three touch structure that could terminate in this area for a potential move to the downside that might even violate our ascending trend line that is obviously a daily trend to the upside so if we do see this price actually pulling to the upside in these areas that is the appropriate area where we would want to look for those long-term selling opportunities from Aussie yen. Now guys, take into mind, we are on the daily time frame, so we need to actually refine what we're looking at to be able to trade over the course of next week. Now what we can see here over the course of last the past few weeks, what we do see is prices basically impulsing into or towards these support structures here, giving us some structures along the way. We then see a bullish reaction from buyers sending prices to previous resistance areas that were tested after prices had broken below those structural areas, giving us what? An idea, because remember, we're expecting prices to come and terminate within this area for those long-term selling opportunities. We're expecting some bullish price action to deliver, to take us to these areas where we will have our selling probability. So we, I've, we have identified where we would love to be selling on Aussie JPY and where price is right now, price is giving us more bullish sentiment than bearish. Why? Because we have been breaking structures correctively. So this could be a larger corrective structure that is just forming maybe even just a continuation because remember, prices have been bullish and we have been seeing those support structures that have been developing in the market being respected. So price is delivering bullish price action. And so we want to 
kind of on Aussie yen align ourselves or be able to capitalize on any JPY strength that we might on any JPY weakness sorry that we might see over the course of next week so what I'll be looking at guys is for an opportunity to sell down low remember range bound market selling probabilities come from the high buying probabilities come from the low so all we are looking for guys is for prices to give us some bullish buyer structure for our trades to actually be managed by the time we get to those resistance areas up there so i will be looking for some bullish price action whether that price action comes in the form of a reversal structure obviously if prices impulse if you see that reversal structure then we're looking bullish or if prices decelerate towards the support structure then i will be looking for my higher probability risk entries for some potential bullish price action so on aussie yen guys we are looking at this potential inverse head and shoulders for a potential bullish move to the upside which will obviously give us a nice opportunity to enter a trade with good risk to reward ratios in the direction of previous momentum and in the direction that we see order flow currently going and also we'll be able to manage our risk appropriately if we get in down low the first area where we'll be looking to manage our trade would be these areas here and the last area would be these areas so we'll still be able to manage to capitalize on a beautiful trade obviously depending on the stop size um, of this entry that we managed to get this trade could potentially give us about 4.8 percent and just also depending on the type of entry that we get we could get a, a trade that will give us a lot higher percentages so guys this is the kind of trade that we are looking for in aussie yen let's go on to nzd cat now that we are on nzd cat i'm gonna introduce the idea of correlation remember we spoke about in, the, in our intro, we said that we're going to talk about how we're going to look for CAD weakness, but still use risk and be able to look at these two pairs, Aussie CAD and NZD CAD, and time our entries on each individual pair. Now, let's first start off on the daily and discuss the structure on NZD CAD. What can we see on NZD CAD? So on NZD CAD, guys, looking at major structural swings, we have highs, we have pushes down to establish lows. We have highs that are formed, obviously previous major highs that were formed before these lows were actually violated to the downside. So now we have two resistance areas, obviously allowing us to draw that resistance trend line. And we have two support areas allowing us to draw that support trend line. Now we know that we have a potential three touch structure on New Zealand dollar CAD. Where are the potential areas of termination if we look to our left hand side we do see some support and some support obviously being tested and causing prices to break structural highs on those higher time frames so buyers coming into this market from these areas creating highs more buyers seeing an opportunity at these same discount prices and sending prices up being able to violate these structural highs and these major structural highs over there so we're obviously seeing buyers coming in from these price regions sending prices higher and price is forming a descending structure towards this area of value so we're going to be looking for that bullish price action on nzd cad as well now enter let's let's go into actually why we're gonna say that we're gonna use correlation to time our entries perfectly so on nzd cad guys what we can see if you just look at the most recent price action look at the swings we have highs lows highs lows highs lows highs and then new lows what has happened on nzd cad we violated previous swing highs to the upside what does that mean for us as trend traders that means that this bearish trend has potentially been violated and what we could be looking for is that lower high or sorry is that higher low to be formed before bullish price action continues to be delivered so this is obviously showing us a sign of strength being able buyers being able to violate structural highs to the upside so we should be looking for some bullish strength but what can we see on our larger time frames we can see a potential three touch structure what is the structure on our aud cad guys we are at the third touch on aud cad so what does that mean for us in terms of traders and us managing our risk that just means guys we should be more willing to take those buying opportunities that do present themselves on aussie cad first nzd cad we also looking for those buying opportunities but we should be looking for nzd cad 
to potentially give us one new low before we actually find long-term bullish strength so we're going to look at these two pairs both entity cad and aussie cad looking to take our buy entries on aussie cad first and then allowing us ourselves or allowing ourselves to exercise patience on nzd cad first so we know the direction we know exactly what we're looking for now we're just waiting for structure to deliver us higher prices imagine guys if we do enter our buy on aussie cad giving nzd cad a chance to set up while our buy is being moving while our buy is moving on aussie cad we then enter a nice late entry on NZD CAD still being able to risk 1% while our Aussie CAD trade is already potentially maybe at break even or maybe we've locked in profits because this setup is going to form first if we look at where price is price is already in this area price is already at our third touch and price has already started decelerating do we see that same price action on NZD CAD yes we do see structural changes but price hasn't been corrective to our support structure so showing us that we need to exercise just a little bit more patience on nzd cad let this trade set up and let's look for those buying opportunities first on aussie cad now i hope we understood that guys let's go on to the last pair that we're going to have a look at that ends that's nzd jpy we'll start off on the daily now guys on the daily on nzd jpy what we can see is prices extremely being extremely 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 bullish now we also can just just looking at basic structure what we do see is major 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 structural highs equal highs being violated to the upside now we saw that violation first of all happening within these areas here and price has broken back within structure remember we always say immediately once we see prices violating structural highs and breaking back within structure we already assume a larger corrective structure now looking at things on nzt jpy guys what i've done on my h4 okay let's just discuss the daily price action first so daily price action is extremely bullish guys we do see prices actually creating those higher highs and higher lows these are the previous lows that were formed before these structural highs were violated so obviously these structural highs functioning as resistance now if we drop down onto that h4 we'll get an idea of the structure that i've drawn in i've just accommodated for this resistance this resistance this resistance and obviously we are looking at these areas over there what can we see happening in those areas we see prices violating our trend line to the upside and breaking back within our structure now because of the nature of the structure and where we are in terms of actual price action guys we're going to be looking for bearish price action on nzdjpy remember if we look at what we were looking for on audjpy we were looking for bullish price action on audjpy expecting that potential inverse head and shoulders to send prices higher on nzdjpy we are already at high prices and so we should be anticipating some sort of a reversal structure to form to deliver us lower prices now because we already at this third touch uh, as, or fourth touch you can call it a fifth touch whatever but we are at this resistance trend line here making or looking for those selling opportunities makes a lot more sense because price has been impulsive violating our structure all we're waiting for is for prices to give us that reversal structure or for that deceleration into resistance for us to be able to either look for that risk entry or for that reduced risk entry on nzd jpy we're also going to use these structural highs for management understanding that prices have broken above these highs and as long as prices stay above these highs they could potentially still be bullish if prices stay above those highs guys and we see deceleration then we start looking for our entries because that is another potential entry once we see prices actually breaking back below the structure then we will know that on our higher time frames or at least in terms of higher time frame perspective sellers were able to push prices lower than we than where previous sellers came into the market so obviously buyers not being able to hold prices above structural areas where sellers 
previously showed interest. Once we see prices breaking back within structure, then we start to look for those reduced risk entries from a higher time frame perspective so regardless of how this trade gives us this entry guys on nzt jpy we're going to be looking for those selling positions now this is how we're going to be hedging jpy strength or jpy weakness on AUD JPY, we're giving ourselves an opportunity to trade any potential JPY weakness by looking for that bullish price action, expecting that inverse head and shoulders. And on NZT JPY, guys, we're looking to trade any potential JPY strength. So if JPY does increase in strength, we rather look for that selling opportunity on NZT JPY rather than. AUD JPY. Why not AUD JPY? Because AUD JPY is far from the appropriate selling area. We know that we want to sell as high as possible. If we look at prices here, prices are relatively low. If we look at the, remember everything is relative in the market. And so where prices were previously and where prices are now, prices are closer to the extreme lows than we are to the extreme highs. And so prices are relatively seen as cheaper and so we know that we for a fact have those high prices on NZT JPY so things are kind of expensive if they get more expensive and we see those sellers jumping out of NZT JPY I mean those buyers jumping out of NZT JPY then we anticipate that JPY strength still giving us an opportunity to trade both NZT sorry both JPY weakness and both JPY strength with the appropriate chances on I mean with the appropriate probabilities and with the structure that complements the bias that we've developed on these two different pairs that are correlated because they share a quote currency now guys I hope that you actually received value from this I hope that you enjoyed the session I love doing these sessions and I know you guys also love watching them and I try and keep them as educational and as informative as possible. So I do apologize for the length of this video in advance. Nonetheless, if you've received some value guys, hit give this video a like. Otherwise, subscribe to the channel. We'll appreciate it so much guys. This is Tremaine. Enjoy the rest of your guys' trading week. Cheers.